Hello everybody, my name is Jennifer Maker and it's a beautiful day to show you how to make these gorgeous vases using alcohol ink and the great maker show and tell. So do you have a plain vase hanging around your house that needs a makeover or just want to create a beautiful vase for your home or something to give as a gift? You can turn a simple and unpretentious vase into a magnificent work of art with a stencil and some alcohol inks. Now, if alcohol inks are new to you, you're not alone. I only heard about these a few years ago from my mother who brought them over to my house once so my daughter and I could play with them. Alcohol inks are highly pigmented, alcohol-based inks that are great to use on any hard, non-porous surface like glass, but they also work well on metal, plastic, ceramic, stone, leather, and polymer clay. Once the ink is on the surface, the alcohol evaporates, leaving the dye behind. And you can mix them in really interesting ways too. So for this project, we'll use alcohol inks in a variety of colors, just like I have here. I've got wild plum, stream, patina, citrus, amethyst, and flamingo. I just love those names. I also recommend some alcohol ink metallic mixatives. I'm using the silver metallic mixative in this project. You won't need much of these, a little alcohol ink goes a long way. And in order to get this gorgeous blended effect that you see on the vase, you're going to need an alcohol blending solution and some cosmetic wedges. These are just the foam wedges. I will show you how to do all of that in this tutorial. Now the hummingbird design that you see here is achieved with a stencil. You can also put on flowers or butterflies as well. Um, to make this stencil, you're gonna need some permanent vinyl and some transfer tape over here. You'll also need a way to cut it. I'm using a Cricut cutting machine, but you can also cut it by hand or with a craft knife. And of course you need a clear glass vase. Any size will do. I'm using this eight inch vase. The wider the vase, the more you'll be able to see your stencil design. Other useful things for this project include a weeding tool, gloves, isopropyl alcohol, towels, scissors, and parchment paper. And last but not least, you need some UV resistant spray and some varnish spray that's going to help keep your alcohol ink from fading. So let me show you where to get my free stencil designs, the hummingbird and the butterfly, and then how to use them to create this stunning vase. Step one, get the stencil design. Download the vase stencil designs from my blog at jennifermaker.com slash 269. Just go to the red bar at the top and look for libraries. Then either click get a password if you don't yet have one or click enter the library. You can find the design by searching the page for design 269 and then click it to download a SVG cut file for cutting with a Cricut or another cutting machine. There's also a printable PDF. Step two, upload and cut your stencils. Let me show you how to cut the vinyl for this stencil on a Cricut cutting machine. First, upload the SVG cut file that you downloaded in step one to Cricut Design Space. If you're unsure how to unzip and upload SVG files, please watch my SVGs Made Simple training series at jennifermaker.com SVGS. There are two designs in this file, a butterfly and a hummingbird. This is what the hummingbird design looks like in Design Space. Now first, hide the design that you will not be using. To hide a group, click on the eye icon in the layers panel next to the project name. Now adjust the size and design if needed to fit your vase. To do this, ungroup everything. You will need to ungroup twice, once for the overall project, and again to ungroup all of the elements of, of either the butterfly or the hummingbird design that you choose to keep visible. After ungrouping, each element will be independent so you can move them around and customize your own design. Get creative and have fun. Now note, you should remember to weld any overlapping pieces and then attach everything together before you cut it so it stays exactly in the same spot as you designed it. This project is set up so that these reverse stencils will mask the areas that we've already painted on the vase and want to preserve. So we will layer our colors from the bottom coat to the top coat. For example, we will first paint the green layer for the leaves and then add the leaf stencil on top to preserve the color before adding the next layer of color. But you can also turn any part of the image into a traditional stencil. A stencil is a piece of vinyl with a design cut out of it. 
for my hummingbird vase. I wanted to make the flowers into cutout stencils so I could add more detail to the petals after I'd painted all of the other layers. To do this, I created a circle larger than the flower design and I placed it under one of the flower layers. I then selected both the flower layer and the circle layer and then clicked on Slice at the bottom of the layer panel. We now have three new layers called Slice Result. We only want to keep the third one, which is the flower cut out of the circle, so we delete the first two. I repeated this process for all of the flowers. And here's a tip, if you have any issues doing this, make sure all of the layers are ungrouped first. This is what my new file looked like before I cut it. Now when you're ready, click Make It and you'll be prompted to select your material settings. And to show you how easy this is to do, my design elf will cut and stencil this vase while I walk you through it. Place your vinyl on your cutting mat, getting it as smooth as possible. The vinyl color doesn't matter because we're only using it as a stencil. Just be sure it contrasts in color with the inks that you're using so you can see it well. Follow the prompts to load the mat and tools into your Cricut. Then press the flashing button to begin cutting. When the vinyl is done cutting, gently weed the design and burnish the transfer tape or transfer paper on top of the vinyl decal. And I did not use any transfer tape on the cutout flowers. They were easy enough to place like stickers on my vase. But I used transfer tape to stick the more detailed and intricate pieces of the vase. Step three, prepare the vase. Alcohol ink can be messy, so cover your workspace with resistant Teflon or parchment paper, uh, anything that will just keep your workspace from getting stained by the alcohol inks. Use gloves if you don't want to stain your hands, too. And make sure you have paper towels and isopropyl alcohol, at least 90% or higher alcohol content, available. Alcohol inks are easily cleaned up by diluting and dabbing with the alcohol. The first thing you want to do is make sure that your vase is good and clean and free of all debris and oil and dust. So moisten the towel with the isopropyl alcohol and rub the vase down thoroughly and then let it dry. Step 4. Paint the first layer. Stenciling and painting the vase is a several part process. First, make the leaf section. You can just eyeball where the grass stencil will go on the vase, but don't stick it down yet. Paint this area thoroughly with green inks. I used stream and patina. Don't worry about any drips or covering too much of the vase. You can easily clean up the excess ink later. To get the blotted effect, you can place droplets directly on the vase and then dab them with a cosmetic wedge. You can add colors individually and mix them together directly on the glass. It might be easier to place the ink droplets on your parchment paper, mix the colors on the paper, and then dab the ink onto the glass. It's your choice. Now alcohol reacts to the wet alcohol ink by diluting it, and it also reactivates dried ink. So be careful when blending layers because if it's too wet, it will be hard to get the colors to stay in place. For best results, let each layer dry a bit before you blend in the next layer. And if you don't like something, you can wipe it off while the ink is still wet, or add some alcohol to a paper towel or, or wedge and clean it right off. You can fix areas to your liking, or even start over completely by cleaning all of the ink off the vase. Now to prevent drips, let the translucent green layer dry on its side for about an hour. Use clean cosmetic wedges to keep the vase from rolling if necessary. Step five, apply stencils and paint the additional layers. Once your glass vase is completely dry, determine where the grass stencil will go on top of the green ink. You can cut slits in the negative space of the transfer tape to help it fit around curves in your vase if you need to. Be sure the grass stencil is burnished really well and sticks to the transfer tape and gently place the stencil over the green inked area, taking care to make sure that there are no bubbles or creases in the vinyl. Now 
Now make sure the stencil adheres really well to the base and then remove the transfer tape. Once you remove the tape, carefully run your fingers over the vinyl again to make sure it's well adhered to the glass base. Any gaps or creases will allow the alcohol ink to run under the stencil and it will ruin your beautiful, lovely, perfectly green section. So be careful with it. Make sure it's really, really well adhered here. Now you're ready to paint the second layer. Dab pink inks. I use flamingo and watermelon on the area of the vase where you want the hummingbird. In the areas where the green and pink meet, you can either blend the colors or use isopropyl alcohol or alcohol blending solution to clean the excess green off the glass first. With the pink ink supplied, let the vase dry again. Once your second layer is completely dry, determine where to place the hummingbird over the pink layer that you have on your glass face. Now remove the backing from the transfer tape on the hummingbird design and gently adhere the stencil over the pink inked area, taking care to make sure that there are no bubbles or creases in the vinyl, just like you did for the grass stencil. At this stage, it may help to add a piece of white paper or a white towel inside the vase so you can see the stencils and colors better. Now you can paint the background layer. Blend the colors, and I used amethyst and sailboat blue, by applying them in layers until the entire vase is covered. You can either blend the background inks into the existing green and pink sections, or if you don't want a blended color effect, you can use isopropyl alcohol or alcohol blending solution to clean the excess green and pink off the glass first. Now let the vase dry again. Step six, apply and paint the flower stencils. Once your vase is completely dry, place your flower stencils on the vase. You can place these by hand. Just make sure that the stencils adhere really well and there are no creases or bubbles. Dab some pink ink, and I'm using Flamingo here, over the flower petal sections of the stencil. Put alcohol blending solution on a cosmetic wedge and dab the flower centers to remove any of the purple background so the clear glass is showing. Dab a mixture of two drops of green, and I need that citrus here, of the green ink, and one drop of the silver metallic mixative ink into the center of each flower. Dab a silver mixative over the pink petals until they are opaque. Now let the vase dry for another few hours. Step seven, remove the stencils and seal the vase. Once the vase is completely dry, carefully remove all of the stencils. Use a weeding tool to help lift the edges of the stencils. This is the big reveal. It is so cool. This is like one of my favorite projects ever. Now it's very important to add UV protectant to alcohol inks so they don't fade. Uh, but you need to seal the vase before you add the UV spray. If you don't seal your vase, the beautiful design will smear and run. So go to a well-ventilated area, apply two coats of sealer, allow about an hour in between each coat, so for drying time, and let it dry overnight. Then after the sealer has dried, spray the UV protectant over the entire vase. Let it dry completely and you are done. Step eight, show it off. You may now use the vase to hold flowers or add a candle to show off the beautiful colors and designs at night. This is just so gorgeous. I am going to treasure this face for years to come, and whoever you make this for will do the same. Isn't it just amazing what we can make? I am in love with this face, and I will be using it often for flowers from my garden this year. If you have any questions about how to use alcohol, inks, and glass, 
please let me know. Leave your question below this video or ask over in my craft group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. And if you need a Cricut cutting machine to cut your stencil, I give one away every month. You can enter for your chance to win your own Cricut cutting machine at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut giveaway. And that's it for today. Tomorrow, I'll be back to show you how to create giant Scrabble tiles and then turn them into fun and personalized wall art that will get all of the compliments. <laughs> and remember, I love to hear what you're interested in making, because if you can tell me what you want to make, I can show you how to make it. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love.